Hello, thanks for tuning in to the Magnificent Speed YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about cream. All right, so you probably know about cream. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Cream, you had Eric Clapton, you had Jack Bruce, and you had Ginger Baker. Everybody knows Eric Clapton is just a British god on the guitar. Uh, Ginger Baker, god on the drums. Jack Bruce, he's a god on the bass. Great vocalist, those Eric Clapton, a great vocalist. Cream, they inspired a whole new set of bands like Rush uh, or like the progressive rock movement. You know, they were psychedelic blues based band, but they're more than that. They took all the elements they had, whether it was Ginger Baker's, you know, African influenced style of drumming. Then you had Eric Clapton influenced by American blues and country. Jack Bruce from Scotland, who was inspired by jazz and just all epic players. So let's talk about the four albums. And at the end of this video, I'm going to rank my top four. So. Here we go. So the first album they put out was Fresh Cream. The debut album by Cream, titled Fresh Cream, was released December 9th, 1966. The album was recorded August through November of 1966. Fresh Cream was recorded at Ray Rick Studios in London and Ray Muse Studios in London. The album was produced by Robert Stigwood. The album reached number 6 in the UK charts and number 39 in the US. Fresh Cream is certified gold in Australia, gold in the United Kingdom, and gold in the United States. I have a vinyl copy of each of these albums. Uh, this is Fresh Cream out in 66. This, uh, I like what it says, here's the back of the album. It says, it all started four months ago as rumors. It seemed hard to believe that three such musical giants as Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, and Jack Bruce could be joining together. Soon it became reality. Cream was formed, and here they are. This album is made up of pure, fresh cream. Digest and enjoy it. But do not worry too much. There is a lot more where this has come from. Cream. And there was a lot more in a two-year span. Uh, this band did some amazing stuff. So my favorite songs on this are kind of like all of them, I guess. On the first side, all the songs were written by Cream. And you have Jack Bruce pretty much writing, having his hand in all of them. And you had some other writers. Ginger Baker wrote Sweet Wine. And then on side two, we have a lot of covers. Skip James by a Muddy Waters cover, Robert Johnson, a lot of older blues, you know, American blues. If I had to pick my favorite songs off this album, I mean, I Feel Free, Genius, NSU, Awesome, Sleepy Time, Time, Brilliant, Dreaming is probably my favorite song on this album. I love that song. In fact, I thought it was a cover, but Jack Bruce wrote it, and it's brilliant. It's only a minute 57. It's a very sweet song. And then Sweet Wine, brilliant. And then on side two, we have Cat Squirrel, which was uh, written by S. Splurge, or arranged by S. Splurge, traditional it says. Then you have Four Until Late by Robert Johnson, Rollin' and Tumblin' by Muddy Waters, I Am So Glad by Skip James, all legendary bluesmen, and then Toad, written by Ginger Baker. So this is a dope, 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 dope album. I have the Atco series. Mm -hmm. So here's my copy of the first album. You got Ginger Baker, Jack Bruce, Eric Clapton, genius right there. The next album that Cream put out was in 1967. So that's Disraeli Gears. Disraeli Gears was released November 2nd, 1967 and was recorded in May of 1967. Disraeli Gears was recorded at Atlantic Studios in New York City, considered psychedelic rock and blues rock. Disraeli Gears is produced by Felix Popolardi. In 1967, Disraeli Gears reached number one in Finland, number five in the UK, and number 16 in Norway. In the United States, Disraeli Gears reached number four on the Billboard 200 and number one on the Cashbox Top 100 Pop Albums year end chart. Disraeli Gears reached number one in Australia and number 10 in Canada. Disraeli Gears is platinum in Australia, gold in the UK and platinum in the United States. To me, 1967 is the greatest year 
in music. So we all are different, we all think differently, but to me, I wasn't alive then, but what I listened to from 67 seems to be some of the best, you know, like you could argue. So anyways, that's just me. I just enjoy that stuff the most. The psychedelic rock, you know, you used to have the Beatles, you got the Stones, you got, I mean, you got Pink Floyd, all that stuff. So, but you also had this powerhouse and this album is, would maybe be definitely in my top 10 albums, maybe top 20, maybe top 10, I don't know. But this album from beginning to end is just genius. They started working with the producer, Felix Papillardi. This guy is all over this album and he was a genius. And of course you got the lyrics, you know, a lot of Jack Bruce songs are written with uh, Pete Brown and Pete Brown is an amazing lyricist. So you have the three guys from Cream, but you also have these other two players that are really pushing them and finding the right words, finding the right tones in the studio. Let's go over some of this. So Strange Brew, brilliant. Originally was Lottie Mama, but there's a story behind that. Anyways, they changed it to Strange Brew. The owner of the record label thought that Eric Clapton should be the main singer. There's a whole story to it. Sunshine of Your Love, uh, epic classic, epic classic. World of Pain is beautiful. Dance the Night Away, genius. Blue Conditions, great. There we go with Ginger Baker again. Side two, Tales of Brave Ulysses, just... <laughs> It's amazing. S W L A B R. Brilliant. We're going wrong. Which, you know, if you think about the times you had Vietnam, I know we're in some tough times right now, but uh, you think about like Vietnam and just the world back then and all the uh, just the craziness that they were going through back then. When I first heard this song, We're Going Wrong, I thought it was like this, you know, to the world, like we all need to change and be better to each other. But really he just got in a fight with his girlfriend or an argument and he went out, walk around the block or whatever and he came up with that song and wrote that song so anyways uh, we're going wrong then it has outside woman blues and then take it back take it back then it has mother's lament just brilliant stuff take it back i mean tales of brave ulysses is just it's just i don't know so my favorite songs off this album strange brew sunshine of your love world of pain tales of brave ulysses uh, we're going wrong take it back but i love all these songs to me this is this is like a perfect album 1967 let's look at the back of the vinyl here there you go there's really gears brilliant bring it up a bit And to me, this the 60s, late 60s is the best of all time in music, in my opinion, but everybody's different. And again, the epic cover. Just, just genius. Ah, I love it. All right, so that's Israeli Gears. All right, the third studio album by Cream is Wheels of Fire. Wheels of Fire was released August 9th, 1968. Wheels of Fire studio album was recorded at the IBC in London and also at the Atlantic Studios in New York City. Wheels of Fire is considered psychedelic rock, blues rock, and hard rock. Wheels of Fire studio album was produced by Felix Papillardi. The album reached number one in Australia, number one in Canada, number two in France, number 15 in Germany, number 16 in Norway, number three in the UK, number one in the United States. And it also reached number 11 and the top R&B albums in the United States. Wheels of Fire is platinum in Australia, platinum in the UK, and platinum in the United States. Here's a vinyl copy, you have uh, the artwork, cool kind of, uh, kind of like a grayscale, I guess, uh, uh, psychedelic kind of piece, I don't know. You got the back there, pretty sick. Fire, the tracks. On the inside, you have this kind of psychedelic piece like this. Pretty cool, the two eyes staring back at you. Very psychedelic, very of the times, very cool. Martin Sharp, I believe, is the artist. Uh, Wheels of Fire, let's go through the tracks. All right, White Room, maybe they're one or two uh, most recognizable songs ever. Uh, White Room, amazing. White Room, Amazing. Eight rooms. Amazing. 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 Sitting on top of the world. Awesome. Passing the time. Passing the time. Brilliant. Uh, as you said, it's a great song. Uh, Pressed Rat and Warthog. Uh, Ginger Baker. Love it. Brilliant. 
a politician is epic. You have uh, Those Were the Days. Those were the days, yes they were. Uh, uh, I love Clapton's backing vocals on that. Or whatever, when he's harmonizing, I believe, with uh, Jack Bruce on that. Born Under a Bad Sign, they did not write that. Uh, it's a cover, uh, Booker T. Jones cover. And Deserted Cities of the Heart. Now that's the studio album on it. It's a, by the way, it's a, obviously it's a, well not obviously. It is a double album. On the first album, or the first two sides, you have the studio album, which is epic. And then you have a live album for the second album, and it was live at the Fillmore. Uh, you have Crossroads, their epic take of Crossroads, uh, great version of it. And then you have Spoonful, Train Time, and Toad are the two songs on the fourth side. And this album is produced by Felix Popolardi. And Felix Popolardi is an amazing producer. He also plays viola on one of the songs. And he played trumpet and tonette, whatever that is. And he plays, uh, let's see plays the Swiss handbells on Those Were the Days. And I believe he plays viola on Deserted Cities of the Heart and violas on White Room. So those violas on White Room, that's Felix Papillardi. Anyways, epic job by all of them on this. I mean, what a team they were. The three amazing musicians and the Felix Papillardi is your producer. I mean, wow. So what a team, amazing team. So there's Wheels of Fire. All right, <clears throat> the fourth and final album by Cream was Goodbye. Cream's final album, Goodbye, was released February 5th, 1969, and was recorded in October of 1968. The studio recorded songs on the album were recorded at IBC Studios in London. The studio recorded songs on Goodbye were produced by Felix Papillardi. Goodbye reached number five in Canada, number three in France, number nine in Germany, number seven in Norway, number one in the UK, and number two in the United States. The album Goodbye is certified gold in Australia, platinum in the UK, and gold in the United States. It must have been really interesting to be at this photo shoot. These guys all <laughs> dressed up in these uh, matching suits. All right, so this album on side one, you had uh, live versions of I'm So Glad and Politician, and they're very well done. And on the second side, you have Sitting on Top of the World badge, doing the scrapyard thing, and what a bring down. Uh, by the way, this was the cream had already broken up, but they, I guess, had obligations to uh, still put out another album, and I think they finished up some tour dates like Good Lads, which is very nice of them and very professional. Um, let me show you the inside of this. You have tombstones for all the songs. This came out February of 1969. So there's some artwork for you. Um, cool. Uh, this album has a song called Badge <clears throat> and that might be my favorite song by Cream. You have Eric Clapton on guitar and vocals. You have Jack Bruce on bass. You have Ginger Baker on the drums. You have Felix Papillardi, the producer on piano and Mellotron. And then they have this mysterious person, Elangelo Misterioso. I wonder who that is. Uh, Elangelo, Elangelo Misterioso. Elangelo Misterioso. And supposedly, uh, the three songs that were written for this album, each of them got to write a song. And all three of the songs are brilliant. Uh, Badge, Doing the Scrapyard Thing, which might even be my favorite song. Uh, Eric Clapton's playing on that is just wah, 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 wah. And then you have, uh, he's playing through a Leslie, and it's just, his licks are just amazing. And uh, Jackie Bruce wrote that song, and the song is this, it's like a circus, it's, it's, it's a trip. And then What a Bring Down was written by Ginger Baker. What a Bring Down is just a great song, and I, I don't know if he meant, you know, because his band was ending, What a Bring Down, but uh, what an epic four albums. So let's rank them now. So I would say out of the four, number four would be the first album, 
fresh cream. I mean, this album to me is an A. a they're all A plus albums to me. I mean, they're legendary. And I mean, if you stream music, you should just go stream the whole catalog. I mean, you, you will not be disappointed. Uh, so that's fresh cream at number four. At number three, oh, geez, Louise, that's tough. Uh, I, well, number three and four, I guess I would have to say goodbye. It would be number three, even though it probably has my two favorite songs on this album. So that would be number three. Number two, ooh, between these two, Wheels of Fire and Israeli Gears. Who's gonna win? I say second place would go to Wheels of Fire, but it is an absolutely epic album. So number one for me would be 1967's Disraeli Gears. It is just, you know, they're kind of in harmony and really working as a team. And well, there's still some happiness and, and they're, they're changing music, you know. I mean, if you think of the Jimi Hendrix experience, you know, having just a trio like that, I'm sure uh, Chaz Chandler was thinking he could be in a band like Cream. Uh, anyways, Cream is an epic band and since we have a little extra time go ahead put those headphones on listen to cream learn about them three outstanding musicians and felix popularity on a bunch of the stuff uh producing playing the lyrics are overall brilliant too and they all wrote lyrics so check them out you will not be disappointed one of the greatest bands ever cream and thanks for watching i appreciate it uh i don't know maybe list your four favorite cream albums in order, uh, the order you like. And I'm gonna do a top 10 on uh, my top 10 Cream songs. And uh, also, if you're in the CD still, I'm sure you can get it cheap, this box set I bought back in the 90s. And it has uh, some cool stuff in there. Cool pictures. The boys back in the dizzle. There's one picture in here, I really, there it is. Let's dig that one. Ginger. Looks awesome. They all just sick, man. Great band. Great music. What a great time. If you were a, a fan of music and alive back then in London or any major city. I'm from San Diego. They did play in San Diego. Um, of course, I wasn't here. I wasn't alive. But anyways, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again. And please subscribe. Please like, I'm gonna be putting up more videos like this. I am a musician, so I'm probably gonna be playing some music, maybe some lessons, I don't know. Uh, be safe, be well, and all the best to you. Good night.